Can you text her and ask her to bring my laptop downstairs for me? I'd appreciate it. And um, I need a phone so I can see all of my little babies. How y'all doing? I'm telling you, last night, the last 72 hours, it has been much. But we made it. And um, we survived it. And I'm glad to be here. And it was so good seeing some of you all last night. As a matter of fact, let me just say this. You know, it just really goes to show you just how, how powerful your presence is because a lot of things that I'm doing now as it relates to Facebook and you all in your lives, I could see the results and people are telling me that when the bumblebees show up, they can feel a difference in the atmosphere. And um, that's a huge compliment for you all because you are already setting the tone. Hey, man. It's hot in here. Is you hot? I'm hot. Find a thermostat. This is one of the lovely ladies. We live on Facebook. This is one of the lovely ladies from last night. She's so pretty. So pretty. She's so bright. Oh, you're on. Yeah, we're on live right this second on my act three with me show. I was just getting ready to start teaching and you walked out. Well, I'm getting out of here. Okay, how are you today? I'm doing great. You look so pretty. Well, thank you so much for last night. Oh, we're a sweetheart. I hope I still look like you. Oh, no, you're gorgeous. Thank you. Thank you. Um, That's one of the. um the sponsors and uh, shareholders of the uh, television station. And um, they were so sweet to me last night. I, I cannot even begin to tell you how blessed um, the program was. If you weren't watching it, you should. It was really, really, really powerful. So what did I wake up with this morning? What was I thinking about today when I got up? opened up my eyes and um, I began to uh, mull over something. Did you find it? Oh no, the thermostat. She asked me, did I, I said, did you find it? She said, the laptop. I was like, no, the thermostat. It is burning up. And see, that's why I'm not going to hell. I can't because I can't stand to be hot. Mm -mm, I can't, not me. I can't be hot. I can't be hot. How many people do I have out there that's like that? I can't be hot. I just turn into another person when I'm hot. Mm -mm, can't do that. But anyway, and I got me some hot tea for my voice and can't even drink it. Unbelievable. But anyway, um, I woke up this morning with a thought in my mind. And today, today's lesson, let me see who I'm, who I'm looking at today. Princess, I see you. Mm -hmm. Kim, I see you. Kim is laughing. <laughs> um, Angela and John Wheeler, yes. And Sheila and Dawn, I see you. Good. I, I, here come everybody. Paul Crouch, how are you, sir? Hey. I was going to go photobomb you. You was going to photobomb me? Come over here so they can see you and say hi. This this is Paul Crouch. Isn't he handsome? <laughs> we just did. Are you and going? Kathy, are you? They getting ready to go and work out. They 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 trying to you know get stay it in shape. Stay in shape. You looking good. Well, thank you. You look great too. Love uh, you. I love you too. Thanks a lot for everything though. Oh, bless you. You're welcome. Bye bye. Um, that's Jan Crouch, Paul Crouch's son. Very very sweet guy. Always have been since the first day I walked on the TBN set. Paul has always been a gentleman, always been kind to me. Um, I truly appreciate it. But I want to say that, um, and you may hear the internet go in and out, but my voice will keep talking, so don't start panicking if the screen gets stuck or anything of the sort, but um, it, it will be okay, okay? One more time, y'all. 
I woke up this morning with the thought in mind about embracing closed doors. Embracing closed doors. And I know that sounds like a dichotomy. That, that, that sounds like you're, you're asking me to do two different things. You're asking me to embrace a door that was closed. And I'm telling you, my thoughts were so strong on that this morning. And um, I got scripture, but I believe that we come to a place in our lives where we become so preoccupied with the doors that have closed that we do not recognize all the doors that God has opened. I just said something right there. And so we have a tendency to go through, um, if you would allow me to call it, Tasmanian devil tantrums when we think that something is being taken away from us. Or we think that we are losing something or we're about to lose something. There is this panic that comes over us in such a way. And the reason why I'm using the word us, I told you I've walked through this already. The reason why I'm using the word us is because you all are my babies. And so what you feel, I feel. And it will always be us. When you find that people are on the same side you're on and we're moving through the same uh, field and we're after the same goals and we agree to be joined together by the hip, whatever is happening to you, it is happening to me. That is the reason why I'm sitting here. I am sitting here because whatever the enemy is trying to do to you, he's also trying to do that to me because I'm connected to you and I'm responsible for the fact that you can't fail. I can't let you fail. But when I know that what we've been studying as it relates to um, this wound, I begin to really ask the Lord about um, what is it? What would be what would be some of the grave dangers when the person's womb has been converted and now it's time for them to break forth and begin to see the manifestations of the promise? What is one of the main distractions? that would be a distraction to the point that this thing will become a hindering force, you know, a real force that, um, that comes to hinder and, and, and stagnate. If somebody can take my, um, take my, um, my phone, where, where's my phone, is it over there? Take my phone and um, I gotta put it on, on internet because I, Oh, this is my phone. Do y'all see how tired I am? I am looking for my phone, and I'm talking to y'all through my phone. All right. Yeah. Okay. All right, then. All right. Then here, push my laptop and put me on the hotel internet, because I, I need to read something. Y'all praying for y'all mama. I'm tired for real. Um, so when I asked the Lord that, and I woke up with that, and he, and he spoke that to me just as plain, embracing the closed doors, not fighting the door, not coming to a place where the door becomes gloves. And so there's this battle because there are some doors that God is shutting that we are constantly trying our best to keep open. I'm talking to somebody right now, and I'm looking down on this page. There are some doors that you see closing in. How do I know when a door is closing in? You know a door is closing in when everything don't feel the same. Now I'm going to let that sit right there. 
You know when a door is closing, when the atmosphere changes. And this is the thing about us that we don't get. We don't get. I don't know what you call this. I don't know why we do this. But why do we try to just hang on until it's like a bat upside your head? Why is it that all the signs are there, even as it relates to relationships? And instead of you taking advantage of the signs given and preparing yourself for the next dimension, for the next level, we would just lay there to the kill. Have y'all ever wondered why we do that? Now somebody gonna answer me today. Somebody gonna answer me today. Mm-hmm. Yes. 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 Yvonne Taylor said, you are most definitely talking to me. Why do we do that? Why can't we ever see that when the atmosphere changes and everything starts changing, then this is what we do. We go on overload because then we take on the responsibility that I got to become the fixer now. I got to become the person that will start doing extra because we want that feeling back. We want that same feeling on my job. I want that same feeling with my business partner. I want that same feeling in this relationship. So rather than to me, me to just accept the fact that this door has shut, we would rather start fixing on things because we don't like the spirit of loss and you only take on a mentality that you're losing something when you do not understand the gain of the womb. How does the womb allow me to gain? Gain, G-A-I-N, how do I gain from my womb? And so if you're not on this page and you have not been taught this, then you are a person that would begin to even give up levels of your own self-respect to save something that's already dying. Now let me look down and see who I'm talking to. Are you hearing that? Are you hearing that? And there's a thing called bowing out gracefully. Yeah, 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 yeah. And watch this, and why, why can I do that? Why can I do that? I'm gonna tell you something. When you look at the scripture and you look at the passage of scripture with, with um, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, I deal with them all the time because that was just like the frame that God gave me and how he wanted me to um, really deal with some things about my own life. And the doors, as, as it relates to where they came from and all of that had shut. And rather than them being in the domain of Nebuchadnezzar, because you know, remember, remember this, the Bible said that Nebuchadnezzar, he, when he captured the children of Israel, he went into the tabernacle and took all of the treasures of the tabernacle, all the utensils of the tabernacle and brought them into his own palace for his own service. He had no respect for sacred things and nothing else. It was like, bam, boom, I own these people. Now, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and Daniel could have got over in that, in that, that, that man's country and in his palace and in, in the setting that they were bound to, that they were bound to and completely showed out. They could have been screaming and protesting, and I just want this, and we just want this for the children of Israel, and we got to have this for the children of Israel. They could have done that. But what they did was, they maintained who they were because their birthing was not from that place. They maintained everything about their character, their God, their respect, what they would put in their body, what they wouldn't put in their body. I'm bringing this up again. I'm bringing this up again because I'm trying to show you something. I'm trying to show you something. That door from where they came from was closed. But let me tell you how we make the mistake. And this is what God said to me today 
that blessed me so hard. He said, when a door Juanita closes, it doesn't close to lock you out. It closes to push you forward because I would never close a door on a person with a righteous wound unless the purpose for that door closing is because another door is already open. Now, I just prophesied right there. I just prophesied right there. The door is not closing because the opportunity is gone. The door is closing because the work is finished. Because there's, you can't go any further where you are. You can't do anything else in that atmosphere. Why? Because when the womb outgrows the work, you have to move to another door. I'm gonna sit that right there. I'm gonna just sit that right there. Somebody need to tap that. My womb have outgrown the work. My God, I feel that resonating down in my belly. Do you hear me? The womb has outgrown the work. When that womb get, I'm not leaving this alone for a minute because we're not almost through with this. I'm just in these people's hotel and I'm tired as I don't know what. Have you ever been sleepy and hungry? And I, I don't want to just start a hollering and my throat is sore, but I'm going to sit this right here because I promise you I am preaching so hard right now till somebody to get me a black towel and a white robe because when the womb is converted properly and it is turned over completely then the womb possesses divine discernment and it is the discernment what this is why I want to get my laptop it is the discernment it is that it is the discernment that helps you to understand. It says here, um, it is the ability to obtain sharp perceptions or judge well or the activity of so doing. It says, in the sphere of judgment, discernment involves going past the mere perception of something and making a nuanced judgment about its properties or qualities. Are you hearing that? Are you hearing that? It says it is, it is the possession of wisdom and be of good judgment, especially so with regard to subject matter often overlooked by others. In other words, the womb comes with the spirit of, of discernment and what discernment does, it allows you to see things that have been overlooked by others. It allows you to have a different perspective than other people would have. It will allow you to look beyond what is perceived to be you got fired or the door shut or this relationship is over with. And it allows you to see beyond what is being perceived. But this is the problem because many of you get stuck in the emotions of the perception. God, he just said something right there. He just said something like that. He just said, we get all carried away by what people perceive it to be. Oh, you lost your job, you did. Perception, perception. Oh, this ended, perception. Oh, you know what, they ain't calling her no more, perception. We get caught up in the drama of perception. That's what a wicked womb does. A wicked womb has no other recourse because it does not have discernment in it. It has to feed off of what it's being fed. So it cannot see anything greater than what it is. And because it cannot see anything greater than what it is, when it does perceive the perception that's being given, and it operates on that and in that, it makes your life worse because it has a tendency to get you to respond to things in a way that is going to be not profitable for you when God gets through unraveling and unveiling and revealing to you what the original intent was of God 
from the perspective of a righteous womb. And so now we're having to backtrack. It's like the Lord is saying, if you perceive it right in a womb that is of the righteous, go this way. Well, if you turn around and go this way in this room, and while you're going this way, you got stuff tied to you and you knocking off lamps and you breaking lamps and breaking couches and knocking off books and breaking the cocktail table. And because you dragging through it with stuff, whatever is over there in this fireplace is catching on fire. And now you got a fire going. You done broke up tables. You done broke up lamps. You done, you, you done spilled stains all over couches. Now they got to go get the manager. And now you got to pay for all the damage that's done. And you got to backtrack all the way back to the original point that the closed door happened and you lost your right perception. And now you have to head in the right direction. Look at all the time you wasted. Who am I talking to? Who am I talking to? Are you hearing this? Are you hearing this? So then you would perceive it as being, if you're not going from what I've been teaching you, if you're not going from what I've been, cause see my mama when we was being growing up, my mother had a rule. You don't eat from nobody else's house. You don't eat nothing from nobody else's house unless I know about it. We would be outside playing, they would have watermelon across the street and everybody, they had to call across the street and say, Miss Bynum, can I give your daughter some watermelon? My mother said, you don't eat nothing. Because see, my mother used to use that Father John, and I'm telling my age now, that, 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 that Father John, that was some nasty stuff. And my mother would give us a teaspoon of that Father John every week. And that Father John keep you cleaned out. She don't want nobody to go locking up your system and feeding you stuff that you that she know you can't handle. When I was young, I couldn't handle a lot of starches. So here you over here, this person give you some bread, and this person give you some rice, and you go down the street the next day, and they eating beans and rice, and you go over here the next day, and somebody else giving you french fries, then you gotta come back home and eat her dinner too. She don't know what's wrong with my stomach. I'm sick, I'm hollering in the middle of the night, I can't go to the bathroom, I'm constipated, she gotta be up all night long with me. You know why? Because I ate from somebody else's table and I put something in my belly that was not agreeable to my system. And when God is converting and he has converted your womb, you can't put stuff in your system that don't agree with your womb. It won't. It literally just won't work. Are you hearing this? Are you hearing this? Then he said this to me. He said, if you experience a door, Juanita, that is shut and you do not have a converted womb, then you're not experiencing a shut door you are experiencing a trap door. My God from Zion. I gotta eat a piece of banana on that one. Uh-uh. Mm. You gotta take a minute. I'm gonna sit that one right there. I'm gonna sit that one right there. I'm gonna eat this piece of banana. Did y'all hear that? Who heard that? You're not sitting now in a shut door. You're in a trap door. And you're in a trap door because you're refusing to live from the wisdom of your womb. And if you don't live from the wisdom of your womb, you will only see the door that's shut. You will never see the door that's open. And you'll find yourself trapped in the emotions and the drama of a shut door. Let me show you the scripture. Let me show you something. Mm. My Lord. Who are he talking to today? 
who is the Lord talking to today? State your name. <laughs> who are we talking to today? Who is he talking to today? Here it is. Here it is. Listen to this. He said, look at me. Revelations 3 and 20. Look at me. I stand at the door. I knock. If you hear me call and open the door, I'll come right in and sit down to supper with you. Conquerors will sit alongside me at the head table, just as I, having conquered, took the place of honor at the side of my father. That's my gift. Watch this. That's my gift to the conquerors. Are y'all listening? That's my gift to the conquerors. So he's saying, though I have shut a door for Israel, that's in Egypt, I already got one open. He didn't go and tell Pharaoh to let my people go and didn't know where his people was going. Hello. I just said something right there. He said, but the bottom line of it is, is that when you, when you are bound up and you are in a situation where God is in the process of shutting a door. Ooh, yes, Lord, I just heard that. I just heard that. The door is not shut on you. Jesus goes to the door and he knocks. And he says, is my property in there? When you open that door, when you open it, when you open that door and say, yes, I am, he said, now follow me out of here. Follow me out of here. Are you hearing this? Are you hearing this? And that's how you embrace the closed door with grace because you know that this is an opportunity that I have conquered this spot. I have completed my course here. This journey right here is over. And you're not throwing me out. I'm not being pushed out. I'm being asked to come out and come go with him to a place that he has prepared for me because I have conquered those grounds. Who am I talking to right there? Who am I talking to right there? Good Lord have mercy. Then he moves us over. Watch this, he moves us over to Revelations 4. And watch this, Revelations 4 and 1. He said, then, oh God, y'all, this is something, this is something. It says here, after this, Revelation 4 and 1, after this I looked and behold, a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice which I had heard, like the sound of a war trumpet speaking with me, said. Did y'all see that? Okay. Let me just stop right here. Let me stop right here. So, he goes to the door of bondage. And he knocks. And he says, is my property in there? You come out of the door, the door you come out of, the owner on the other side of that door, he shuts the door. So then the shut door is an honor. Good Lord have mercy. Because I've been asked out of this door. The spirit of Christ, the warrior over my womb, came to the door of my finished work and asked me out. I came out and he said, now, let me get the residue off of you from the last door. Y'all gonna make me get up in this place. Y'all gonna make me go for it. I'm telling you, you gonna make me shout. 
He said, let me get the residue off of you from the last door. Sit down right here and let's just eat for a minute. Do y'all see that? Let me strengthen you. Let me feed you. Watch this. And let me sit you down so I can give you your name and give you your proper place. So I bring you out of that place and I call you a conqueror. And then I sit you down where the conqueror sit. And I let you take a breath as a conqueror. So now you're not filled with anxiety. Who? My God. My God. You already know. You already know that God got something great for you. Because he calls me a conqueror. Oh my God. And now he feeds me for the journey. And he sits me down at the right hand. So now we get to Revelation and the fourth chapter. And now he's not talking at me. He's not talking just to me. He's talking with me. That womb has now given me relationship. Are y'all getting that? Oh my God, who? Oh, let me see who talk about him. Yes, God, yes, God, yes. So look at this. He said, after this, I looked and behold, a door standing open in heaven, which means when I choose to live from my righteous womb, from my converted womb, I don't care what shuts down here. There is a door that remains open in heaven. Can somebody send somebody say hashtag I got an open door? Can y'all just stop posting that? Hashtag I got a open door. I, don't worry about where I'm going. That's what you need to be saying. Don't worry about what I'm doing because he didn't call me out to figure out where he was going to take me. Every time he knocks and say, come out of the bondage of this door, he going to always show my eyes a door standing open in heaven, which means I don't have to bang it. I don't have to pray it open. I don't have to knock it open. Mm -mm. It comes with the discernment of my womb. I can see it, and that's why you cannot spend time trying to justify and tell people about what it is that God is trying to do for your life because they will never see it, they will never understand it, and to them, you will always be somebody that's struggling and wish that you could. And the reason why they see it that way, because only the righteous womb can discern and see the open heaven. Why? Because the righteous womb is not starving. The righteous womb is not suffering malnutrition. It is not undernourished in the spirit. It is not spiritually bankrupt. It has been fed from a place of a conqueror. It has been fed from another status. It's been fed from another realm. And because of that, because of that, I can see a door that is standing open in heaven. Who? Is y'all Y'all I can't I can't This is too much This is way too much That door is open That door is open And watch this He said And the And the voice Which I had heard Listen to this It was a voice Which I had heard like the sound of a war trumpet speaking with me said come up here and I will show you what must take place after these things King James Version said come up hither and I will show you great and mighty things which have never been seen before are y'all hearing God today is anybody listening to God right now because I'm telling you, this thing about to make me run all over this building. And I know I ain't got no strength today. 
but I will make up some strength and go and run outside on this one. He said, it's a war voice. Like some people say, well, you know what? Why do you buy them? You just be preaching so hard. Because there comes a time in somebody's life, people that are on this page right now, there comes a time in your life when the Lord has to speak to you from a war voice rather than a teaching voice, a war voice. Because a war voice is a commanding voice. A war voice has two tenses in it. A war voice has in it, come here now and don't touch this one. A war voice has a twofold thing in it. I'm fighting with you and I'm fighting for you. Are you hearing me? I'm calling you to a place that I'm going to have to snatch you to because it's, it's a whole nother realm. And I got to snatch you through channels. I got to snatch you through all the stuff that's in your head. I got to snatch you through all of what you think people think about you. I got to snatch you through your own inabilities. I got to snatch you through your own insecurities. And when I get through snatching you with my war voice, while I am positioning you, I now have to tell the enemy, not this one. Not this one. Back up. This one is covered by the blood of Jesus. And the sound is made that the demonic forces know that the heavens have spoken on your behalf in the tone of a war voice which sends out a resounding in the spirit realms, in the spirit realms, that this movement and this positioning is of God and do not move everybody. Keep your hands and your feet in your demonic buses because this one is going to happen. Whether you like it or not, whether you hate them or not, whether you think they should get it or not, everybody stand still because this next move is the positioning from a divine place that was originally intended with your name on it and everything must come to a halt until God does what he's getting ready to do. Are you hearing this? Good Lord have mercy. Good Lord, man. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Je Did y'all hear that? Did y'all hear that? Then he said here. Ooh, I'm going to let y'all sit on that one for a minute. Uh-uh. Mm-mm. I'm going to let you sit on that one for a minute. You gotta sit on that for a minute. I'm going off in a little bit. I'm going off before before four o'clock today. But he says here, come up here. Come up higher. I gave you the womb that can take you higher. I gave you a womb that can see from another place. Come up higher. Raise your mind. Come up out of that stinking thinking. Come on up. Come on up. Come on up. Come on up. You can't see it from where you are. You got to come up. You got to bring your... That's what I've been doing. That's what he had me sitting here for all these weeks since July 2nd. To just bring you up. Get you converted. So that he could take you up. He said, come up here. That the translation said that I may show you great and mighty things which you have not seen before. This translation said, and I will show you what makes what must take place after this. And watch this. It said, and at once, I was in special communication with the Spirit, and behold, a throne stood in heaven with one sealed on the throne. And he who sat there appeared like the crystalline sparkle of the jasper stone and the fiery redness of a sardis stone. And encircling the throne, there was a rainbow that looked like the color, that looked like the color of an emerald. I want you to see this. I want you to see this. At once, I was in special communication with the spirit. That's why I want you to keep that at. I want you to park that right there that at once when I came up when I got converted 
when I understood the power of embracing a closed door. When I understood that if I don't allow God to convert me, listen, listen at this, y'all. Listen at this, listen at this, listen at this. I want you to hear this. I want you to hear this. Time is moving. Time is not standing still. Time is moving. So, this is how I'm going to give it to you. Time is moving. So, at this time tomorrow, well, long before this time tomorrow, it would be necessary that I move out of this hotel and I head to Alabama, to this conference. Time is not going to stop. If I decide to lay in that bed and don't take my plane, that plane going to take off. I don't think y'all hear me. If the devil hijacked me and I decided I wasn't going to this woman's conference, they're going to still have a conference. Are you hearing me? So if I stay here and my time here was up, I'm not going to be comfortable here. I'm not going to have any peace here. And depending upon how long I stay, if I decide to stay here for the next two years, I might run out of money sitting here. Are y'all hearing me? So for you not to embrace the converted womb causes you to miss the timing of God because time is, is still moving. So there's a certain time that a door is supposed to close, but there's also a certain time that you're supposed to walk through the new one. Are you hearing me? And if he knocks and say, that course is finished, and you keep holding on and fighting and dragging and kicking and screaming and tell me they did me wrong and I, you keep on operating in that manner, you're going to miss the meal. And when you miss the meal, you're not going to be strengthened for the journey. You're not going to be strengthened for the journey if you miss the meal. And if you're not strengthened for the journey, you can't accomplish what God has for you. Why do you think when he got ready to use the prophets, what did he say to him? Sit down, let me get you some bread. Let me bake this cake for you. You eat this, and it's going to go down in you. It's going to taste like, like honey. But when it hits your belly, it's going to be bitter because it's going to be a true word. And when it hits your belly, it's going to go in your belly. And it's going to analyze and decipher everything that's down in there that I want you to spit back up as my divine will. That I want you to spit back up as my divine will. Are you hearing me? So anybody that God got ready for a journey, when that journey is prophetic, he fed you. Sit down and eat. Mm -hmm. Take it in. Take it in. Because time is at hand. And so you got to get your spirit right about what's closing, what has been closed, and what's been absolutely shut. I'm telling y'all, it's a mindset. That mindset is deep. It's the way you think about things that will determine how you come through it. And if you think about it from a negative perspective, and you think about it from the perspective of the lower womb, you think about it from the perspective of a wicked womb, you're gonna always be struggling, you're gonna always be frustrated, you're gonna always be looking for somebody to give you an answer, you're gonna be always looking for a prophecy. I'm not hearing y'all. When people of God, it's time to look for direction. It's time to know direction. And not only getting direction, it's time to have an inside navigator where you know where you're going. And if you don't know where you're going, he know where you're going. And during that time, there is a period of time 
that you're supposed to feel like. Lord, I don't know what you're doing. You know what that is? That's that period. When you go through that moment of God, I don't know what you're doing, but you know what? All I know is I'm following you and all I know is I'm telling you yes. That's that.